Hey everybody, Dylan with the HD Perspective. I thought I'd give you an updated tour of my toolbox since I think it's been longer than a year since the last one. And, uh, you know, I've accumulated a few more things since then and changed things around. So, this is my toolbox and I guess I'm a heavy duty mechanic so I work predominantly at oil filled equipment, uh, lots of frack equipment, um, blenders, frack pumps, also some cementing stuff. Uh, Putzmeister telebelts, um, so for moving sand, um, nitrogen units, so uh, N2 pumps and bulkers and that kind of thing. And as well as that, I work on the trucks that pull these units around, so Kenworth Peterbilts and a few Western Stars and stuff. Mostly Cummins Power, but also CAT and Detroit as well. So here's the things that I use to. Uh, make a living, feed my family. So yeah, just on the right here, I got my bigger impact sockets. I got a few three quarter drives, just more of the, the more common sizes that I need, like inch and a quarter, inch and an eighth, inch and five sixteenths, inch and five eighths, use that a bit. I got a inch and a half. Um, yeah, and then, uh, Half inch drive. I've kind of I've got every size up to inch and a half, I guess, and then my short ones as well. I also have this uh, three quarter, um, twelve point. So some of the drive line bolts, uh, that's what it uses. So I bought that one just to do that. I've got an impact driver there that I don't use too much. Um, yeah, a few of my more commonly kind of screwdriver type tools so well or at least the handles are the same I got a 45 pick there gasket scraper Phillips flat screwdriver um, you know body panel clip tool which actually is handy for more than just body clips those plastic things uh, yeah cotter pin uh, tool um, 90 degree pick so I use that a lot for air to air hoses stuff like that rad hoses also that 45 and uh, yeah so in the back here um, I've just got metric 12 point uh, 3 8 drive impact sockets and I've got some half inch drive so I just bought these Tecton ones and you know they're not too bad they're cheap so I, and I don't use them much but you know, every once in a while you need them, so, you know, beats spending a whole bunch of money on the snap-on truck or something, and just for a tool that you hardly ever use. This here is my broken uh, tool holder, so I got a few things in there that I need to get warrantied and take back and stuff or replace, so, actually, this, uh, this is my dad's, so it's the snap-on actually made in Canada so yeah they used to make them up here at one point back when he was uh, on the tools more I guess so got to get that warrantied for him uh, this is just for on some of our bigger pumps um, taking the caps off to pull the plungers out so if you're familiar with uh, oil filled pumps then you'll probably know what that's for uh, what do I got here? So just an E-Torx and Torx uh, impact socket set. Uh, pretty handy kit. Once again, something that I don't use a whole lot of, but handy when I need it. And then below that I've just got the Allen impact sockets as well. So although they don't seem to want to stay up in the in their places anymore. But also a very handy set and uh, yeah, something that you need, so. At least in my line of work. Uh, over here, I've got, you know, my ratcheting screwdriver. I've also got this small one here. Um, you know, don't use it a whole ton, but uh, most of my extensions are in there. And uh, let's see, oh, this is pretty uh, neat little tool. Um, drive, keep your quarter inch uh, drive bits in there and the pivots and then this ends a normal quarter drive or socket so 
reverse spool and flex head. Um, let's see here I've got uh, drive line um, sockets, so for Kenworth Peterbilts, that kind of thing. Actually, I just got this one warranted from the Matco guy, so I haven't used it yet. That's why it's uh, looking as good as it is. Uh, what else we got in here? Well, I got some of these uh, Snap-on Wobble Plus extensions. I find them pretty handy, so I like them. I've had them replaced a few times. And then I've kind of got my a few different ratchets here, you know, just the stubby. Oh, these ones are kind of cool here. They're uh, gearless ratchets, so they work just like a clutch or something inside there, so. And then to reverse it, you just push it through. Uh, and I've got the quarter drive too, but can't put a whole lot of torque on them. I think Snap-on might have a version of that too, but I've heard kind of mixed reviews on that. Um, you know, Mac 3.8s. Uh, yeah, snap-on half inch. So this one's an older one. Um, got it given to me. I still use it. So a little little snap-on guy here, just in case. And you know, just another half inch Mastercraft, quarter inch. Actually, this belongs over here. So now, uh, what else do I got here? Just some scrapers. Um, you know, bits, that kind of thing. Uh, you know, all those turbo sockets. This, this is just a cheap set I've found on sale. Canadian tires, so it doesn't really work that great. I haven't had too much luck with it, but it's always good to have options. Uh, some more Matco bits down there. Um, yeah, what else? Um, yeah, cam uh, rotation gauge there. Uh, some chrome sockets that don't get used a whole lot. Um, yeah, they're just kind of there if I need them. Kind of self-explanatory, I think. Uh, this is a stud driver here. So, and actually so is this. So there's some pieces in there, some wedges that you can stick in there to kind of... And it actually works fairly well once you figure out how it works. Um, this I made for taking those wing nuts out of the battery box on Kenworth's so I just stick that on the end of my impact or power ratchet or whatever and zing them out. Got tired of using pliers and thought that there might be a better way so did that. Um, these are kind of this, my go-to sockets that I use all the time. Uh, most of them impact. I just use impact sockets for mostly everything even if I'm using my hand tools. So I've got the snap-on 3 8 ratchet and I've done you know a couple videos about that already so if you want to check that out you can. A uh, 3 8 impact I've had rebuilt once already so I've had that for a couple years now maybe. Um, what else? Uh, adapters here so I've got 3 quarter to 1 inch, uh, 3 quarter to half, half to 3 quarter and so on. These are pretty cool. Um, you know, they only step up, I guess. So you can go from uh, half to three quarter and three eighths to half inch, but uh, they fit right on your impact or whatever and don't take up uh, that much room. So I thought they were kind of cool, although they have these magnets for the uh, so to hold onto the sockets and they don't really work that well. But it can get you out of a bind, that's for sure. Yeah, my half inch um, sockets here, impact sockets. I got these swivelly ones here, 12 point impact sockets. These are snap on, I guess. Uh, some picks and my go to ratchet here for 3 8 just to snap on. Got this guy as well. Uh, had to bring him out of retirement because well, I had this Maco one, which I've done video comparing about, and I love or comparing the two anyways. I love the length, um, but yeah, I just had it rebuilt here, so the teeth stripped out on the well, on the pole, I guess, or they, it snapped the pole anyhow. 
So that lasted, I don't want to say, eight or nine months. And then I had to bring this one back from home so I could keep working. And then once the Mako guy came, then he rebuilt it for me. So here's my most commonly used pliers, I would say. Uh, Nipex or Knipex. Cobras, 10 inches. Some side cutters, just the angle ones. I kind of like the angle. Needle nose. Actually, I haven't used these ones much because I I lost my pair and then uh, bought this one. And then I found the, the other pair that I lost at home there. So, um, yeah, I just got these ones. So that's just the way it goes, I guess. <laughs> uh, flush cuts here for cutting zip ties. Um, cutting them flush off so they don't you don't reach in and get uh, sliced or whatever I got these screw extractors uh, engineer so I guess that's like the same as the vampire and I got this other set here too so actually I ordered I think this one on Amazon and it never showed up so I got my money back and then I saw this in the store so I bought this pair and then uh, a week later you know after I had bought that one, this one showed up. So like a month, month or two after I had bought this one originally, it showed up in the mail. So I guess I got it for free. But I use these, I guess, for there's that little chrome plate underneath the driver's side and passenger side doors on the Kenworths um, for taking those screws out. Because a lot of time they strip out, and if you got to do a clutch or something, you got to get that out, or you know, a tranny cooler or something. Just some uh, pinch off pliers come in very handy for working on air systems or cooling systems. Got to pinch off a hose or whatever, you don't want to drain the whole cooling system. A couple of vice grips here. So this one um, is the Nipex version. Um, I like them because they release quite easily compared to standard vice grips, the Erwin ones, but they don't grip as well as the Erwin ones, I find. And sometimes you get these suckers on so tight you got to use a hammer or a pry bar to get them off. So, kind of pros and cons, I guess. Depends what you're working on. Uh, cable cutters and just a regular pair of slip joint pliers. So I guess that's kind of my top drawer. So it's my wrench drawer here. I guess we'll start over here. I've got my bigger wrenches. I got up to an inch and a half. So I use these predominantly for hydraulic fittings, JIC or B type fittings. Oh, these are kind of cool. They slip over uh, your Allen wrenches, so you can make them into a T-handle. Oh, they're uh, maybe I thought it was a little bit gimmicky, but they actually do work. So. Uh, 30 mil, kind of a common size. So I just bought the single one. Uh, doing air brake calipers, uh, what else, I don't know, 30 mil seems to be all over the place, so, oh, some, some driveline flange bolts are 30 mil on our bigger equipment, so our big high horsepower units, uh, crescent wrench, well, and that's what I got these for too, is undoing and torquing those flange bolts, um, yeah, they're, uh, 30 mil head on there, so what's that, M18, I think. And I got this cheap hammer wrench, I just kind of bought it on Amazon for five bucks or something, and it actually works pretty well, so. Sometimes there's just no room to get in there uh, with a long handle ratchet or something, so it's good to have those to break them loose. Um, if you're thinking about uh, getting some Allen wrenches, I would suggest getting these. These are the best ones that I've ever tried. Uh, Vera, so they're a German brand, but I don't know if it'll focus, but they've kind of got these indentations here on the side, and I find they just grip extremely well, so, you know, a lot less likely chance of stripping out those Allen heads. I know they can be a real pain sometimes, so um, invest in a pair of those, and uh, I've been I've been pretty happy with them. I just wish, and maybe correct me if I'm wrong, but I haven't seen a socket set. If they made a socket set, I think that would be just deadly. Um, yeah, another crest wrench actually belongs up there. I've got these Nipex plier wrenches. 
I've got the 16 inch, 12 and the 10 inch and what I use these predominantly for is uh, hydraulic fittings. So especially if you've got to climb up on top of a unit somewhere and there's a whole bunch of different lines, different sizes, so it's handy to just kind of shove those in your pockets because if you forget a wrench down below or whatever then you gotta climb back down or something so good for airlines as well uh, on air systems uh, and these actually the 16's open quite wide so you can get your Dash 32 uh, GICs with those although good luck trying to break them loose but I mean you can do them up and you can once you've broken them loose you can uh, wind them out so that's what I use those for um, these long uh, wrenches uh, are quite handy. You know, I don't use them a ton, but uh, whenever I need them, they're there, and uh, they they have saved me a few times. Like, makes my life a lot easier, anyways. Uh, what else do I got? I got these offsets here, snap-on. I've got from what is this three eighths up to inch and a quarter, and then I just bought inch and a half on its own because dash sixteen. At least with the Eaton narrow clip hoses on a GIC fitting, this inch and a half, so it's kind of my, maybe the most common hydraulic line that we deal with. Uh, so that's what I use that for, and it's very handy. I, I love this wrench set, and I use it all the time. Um, I would like eventually to get the metric, but they're just so bloody expensive that, you know, kind of been putting that off. Uh, little stubby wrenches there, so just they're just master craft, um, good for getting in tight spaces. And these actually I picked up on sale at Canadian Tire, um, very handy. I mean, I didn't think I would use them much, but they're just so cheap that I was like, you well, know, why not, you know. But uh, sometimes it's nice to get down in there and then you have clearance for your hand. The one thing that kind of... Uh, Sorry, the one thing that kind of ticked me off about them is they do skip uh, size, so 19, 20, and then 22 mil, so where's the 21, kind of, so, yeah, so where's the 21, the most common size, um, that kind of ticked me off. And then on the Imperial side here, uh, they double up on the 916, I think it is, or sorry, half inch, oh, and the 916. And then it goes 11 sixteenths, 13 sixteenths, three quarters. So, I mean, it's in the wrong order. Maybe it's just the OCD in me. But, uh, I mean, they got to realize that they're dealing with mechanics. And that's uh, kind of a trait that's good to have in this field. So, like, you know, you don't have any comebacks and you do the job properly. So, something I, I noticed. And actually, speaking of... Of other things, so this Tecton set of crow's feet, I just needed big crow's feet, and these are fairly cheap. And they work okay, but uh, some of these holes, they're like not centered in the... So I, I don't know what they were thinking. Um, when they were broaching those holes for the drive, but, but they do work. Um, I have spread the inch and a quarter fairly easily. Uh, so that's kind of unusable now, but uh, for the price, I mean, I paid a hundred bucks for the set, and I think of like this snap-on one I just bought on its own before I had this set, inch and seven eighths, and it was eighty bucks on its own. So yeah, what do you do? They are handy for sure. Uh, line wrenches, that's just Craftsman. Uh, some old school ratcheting wrenches there. And then my macro uh, crow's feet there. So very handy for hydraulic lines once again. Uh, sometimes, you know, that's all that's going to get in there. So undo those those lines. Uh, got my ratcheting wrenches here. They're just Mastercraft maximum. They work pretty good. I got these Sunex uh, half moon wrenches. Yeah, um, don't use them a whole ton, but every once in a while, you know kind of saves your bacon. Flank drive plus wrenches, uh, metric and standard. So very, very good. I like the open end on them. I like the feel in the hand. I think it was well worth it considering I use them every single day. 
um, and what I bought them close to 10 years ago now so uh, they've served me very well what else oh yeah this max set here I bought when I was a first an apprentice I put shrink tube over the 9 16 and uh, that's just for uh, taking off battery terminals so so you don't short out I don't know I uh, thought it was a good idea at the time and it seems to work so um, yeah snipe there so it's got some magnets comes in handy every now and again so here's my power tool slash other stuff drawer um, I got my pipe in the back here half inch torque wrench 3 8 torque wrench actually I should probably get a better half inch torque wrench but it serves a purpose uh, yeah um, I won this on the snap-on truck, so sometimes, you know, there's kind of a shortage of airlines, or sorry, Mako truck. There's a shortage of airlines in the shop, and uh, there's only the big airline left, so I just plug this end into the big airline, and then I got my regular end there, so I can use my air tools if I need to. Uh, these guys, um, use them a lot for hydraulic fittings, just breaking them loose, so I'll take this one and put it on a dash 32 and then put a snipe on the end and crack it loose so and then I got the smaller one they're handy uh, kind of need two-handed operation so pretty hard to use one-handed so that is one downside of them for sure uh, yeah angle impact there so doesn't get used a whole lot um, but handy I wish it was a little more powerful to be honest but uh, yeah, it does get used from time to time and it is handy when it works. So, three quarter drive uh, snap on impact, air impact. Just getting a little tired, probably. Um, maybe it could use a rebuild, but uh, you know, priorities, I guess. And it just costs money, so it's still it's getting, it's getting up there in age. Um, so, very reliable. I would say, actually, we got a shop. We just got a new Matco one as a shop. Uh, impact and actually our Mako guy gave us one for trial and then it, it broke after a week I guess so our management in their infinite wisdom decided it would be a good gun to buy so they bought one um, and it probably puts out a little bit more than this the Mac version another coworker of mine's got it and I've tried it a few times and like when this one won't break it loose that Mac one will so but who knows how long it's gonna last putting out that kind of power also, Aircat, they make a decent one, you know, no other co-worker, he's got one of those and no complaints from him, so. Uh, the Milwaukee first gen half inch impact, so definitely uh, use it all the time. It has its limits for sure, but uh, it is nice to have a cordless. Uh, maybe the new one's a little better. Half inch drill, use that quite a bit. Um, yeah. I don't know, always seem to be fabbing up a bracket or a guard or something like that. Always got to drill some holes or drill out broken bolts, you know, that kind of thing. Air hammer, uh, so this is the Mac one. It's the older model than what they got now, but I'm pretty happy with this one. I've heard, you know, the Snap-on puts out more, but I'm not too sure. I mean, I've got a coworker with it, and it seemed about equivalent, and this one was way cheaper, so... I don't know, to each their own. Just Princess Auto cheapy uh, angle drill. Don't use it a whole lot, but once again, one of those things that you need to get in a tight spot and drill a hole, mount something up, it's there. Uh, this is something that I didn't think I'd actually use a whole lot, but I actually do. Um, Brother-in-law found it in the snowbank and gave it to me, so I uh, lucked out with that and actually use it quite a bit whether it's to cut up a piece of dunnage so you can you know hold something in position while you bolt it up or even just cutting out a uh, suction line or something like that hydraulic line you can cut it you know if, if you know you're going to take it out anyways um, yeah I actually use it quite a bit uh, cutting sheets of Teflon or that uh, HDP 
you know, we use that for some of our guards and stuff, so they get kind of chewed up and have to cut a new piece. Works good for that. Uh, so these are my air tools, cutoff tool, uh, die grinder, and 90 degree air grinder. So, you know, they had these on sale at uh, Princess Auto, I don't know, five or six years ago, and I've been happy with it. Same with this one. I mean, it's a power fist. This one's IR. Um, yeah, it won't die, so I keep using it. Uh, air angle grinder. Don't use it too much, but one of those things. I don't know. Actually, I have a Milwaukee fuel, which we'll see in another drawer here. That has kind of replaced that one. Uh, handy blowgun kit. I like this because of these different pieces there. So if you're testing air systems or or whatever, you can just blow through the line depending on how big it is. There you go. Dead blow hammer, soft face. You know, if you don't want to damage something, it actually can hit probably harder with that than sometimes with a steel hammer, just because of the sand in the or the beads or whatever is in there. That was my kind of go-to hammer, just short handle but heavy. And my bigger hammer there. Uh, got some crow's foot uh, pry bars there. I just picked up this Milwaukee set a little while ago here because I lost the third pry bar in the set and I'm not sure where it's gone because I lost it probably about a month ago and we're still working on the same unit and it's still in the shop here. Um, lots of our units we strip them right down to the frame rail and rebuild them so they're in for two three months at a time and I still can't find it so I don't know if somebody walked off with it or what but I needed a pry bar of this length here so they had this set on sale and I picked it up and actually I'm kind of impressed with it so far so they seem pretty strong and they're quite a bit lighter with this I-beam construction got the striking cap so um, yeah Still kind of ticked about that other pry bar. Me and that pry bar have, you know, had some uh, good times together. <laughs> yep. And then I've got the long, uh, just a longer Mac one, and I bought this uh, pry bar, which very handy. You can adjust the angle of the head here. So, so yeah. Kind of locks in place and then the handle extends as well so um yeah trying to work hoses through um, where they need to go or yeah it's always nice to have options a couple more batteries there so i think that's this good for that drawer So yeah, this is kind of my punch and drill bit drawer miscellaneous items. So a bunch of files, punches, you know, chisel holder, seal tool that I don't know doesn't really work that great. Uh, feeler blades, just some ends for the air hammer, measuring tape, Teflon tape, um, belt gauge there so you can kind of put that in the ribs of the belt and see if it's worn out you know belts they wear actually like a tire now you know before you kind of look at it and see if it was cracked or or whatever but they make them out of different material now and so you got to see if if they're worn kind of like the tread depth on a tire so that's what that's for uh, you know, there's a tread depth gauge here. Cheap drill bit set. I wouldn't recommend buying one of those sets. They're not very good at all unless you're just kind of drilling through wood or something, but you can forget it with steel. Uh, bearing press. Uh, some stud drivers that I made up. Uh, sparker. Oh, these are handy for uh, taking valve stem caps off the inside tool. So this I use for setting up the, the clutch on a truck. So I guess put it between the release bearing and and the uh, clutch brake. It's supposed to be a half inch, so half inch head bolt. 
5 16 bolt. And you can kind of reach up through the access hole and stick it in there and then you know you're set up properly. So I got my blue point easy outs there, some reverse, uh, some left hand drill bits there, a little level, piece of plastic there for hammering. Actually, I don't know where it went. Air chuck, you know, a framing square hacksaw. I have so what I was missing is I don't know where it went to. Maybe it's in another drawer. Uh, I've got those hole punches for uh, punching holes in mud flaps. That's kind of what I use that for. Oh, one other thing. These little uh, pieces here for. Uh, disc brakes, Bendix disc, disc brakes for the adjustment bolt. I always keep spares because they break pretty easy. Roll pin punches in here, grabber tool. Oh yeah, here they are. So this is what I was talking about. Just for punching holes and rubber, plastic, that kind of stuff. So what do I got here? Screwdrivers that aren't uh, used as much. So they just live down there in case I need them. Uh, spring, or sorry, circ clip tools here. Um, these are a Mac set, so they're, I like them a lot actually because it's a dedicated set. So you got the internal and external snap ring pliers, circ clip pliers, and then I've got you know the bigger ones for bigger ones, uh, 45s, straights in the 90, um, wire strippers, needle nose, just some cheaper pliers, you know, a few more channel locks there, some more holes, uh, pinch off pliers, you know, the long needle nose and the angle there, so I got my brake tools here, setting up slack adjusters. Got the locking pole style with that square head on top. Um, what else? Um, filter wrenches. So actually I just picked this up not too long ago and I actually like it a lot. So Mako. It was fairly inexpensive I think. Um, good for coolant filters with the Cummins ISX on a Kenworth. When it's right up in the frame rail there. Get you one of those if you ever have to do those. Um, yeah, built the wrenches, so medium and then big one. Uh, yeah, and then this is for your fuel filters on Kenworth. Fuel filter wrench there. Uh, very handy tool here, hose clamp. Uh, hose clamp pliers, I guess you call them. So you can put that end there on the hose clamp and then, you know, reach down and get it or get it around your hose clamp and then squeeze it in and it holds it for you. If you can't get a pair of pliers down in there. Um, some filter pliers there. And a little holding clamp tool. Um, tap and die set here. Rethreading kit here, snap on. So, I mean, whether you get it from Snap on or Mac or Maco or Amazon, they're all the same, just rebranded, but good set to have. You know, certain sizes I've used a lot, other ones never. So, it's one of those things that you kind of hopefully you don't have to use. Got my dial indicator here. Just keep it in the plastic bag. Try and keep it as clean as possible. They ain't cheap, so setting preload on bearings, 
what else? I don't know, flywheel run out. That kind of thing. You need one of those. Yeah, here I just kind of keep my air tools. I don't really use too much since I switched over to electric, but it's kind of a shame because good some good money in there. Spent some good money on those, and I got a fair amount of use out of them too. And I've just got some random fittings here for testing air systems. Just using shop air or whatever. Um, this one I made up here. I got burned one time, couldn't find an air leak. Could, could watch the air leak drop down, couldn't hear it though. Truck wouldn't maintain air. And uh, I suspected the fan, the fan hub, but it was working properly. And finally, I rigged up that so I could hook right up to the fan hub and, and run it with the engine off. And sure enough, as soon as you put air to it, you could hear it pissing, so. That's why I have that. You know, a regulator. Some of my three-quarter ratchets and breaker bars and stuff. Knee pads. Sledgehammer. Uh, I've got my colored zip ties here for marking lines. So, if you don't do that, you know, maybe start, because it's a easy way to make life easier for yourself trying to figure out where lines go after you're done can be a nightmare and especially if you're taking something apart for somebody else to put back together again the the other guy will be thankful so this is my red pressure tester and I bought the Mako one because I can use shop air with it and uh, no one likes to sit there and pump for for days or whatever with the little hand pump ones for automotive so, we've got some pretty big cooling systems here, and uh, yeah, I don't like those hand pump ones. Fifth wheel pin puller, you know, I always get tired of looking through the jockey box of some driver's trucks, try and find one, so I finally, uh, I had to fix a bunk heater and a sleeper, Take so I took the mattress out, took everything out, and uh, lo and behold, there's like five of them in, shoved in behind, so it was Kenworth. They'd shoved them in the bo jockey box in the hole that goes uh, for the heater vents. And uh, they'd eventually all fallen down in there. And so there's like five of them in there, so I snagged one for myself. Oh, uh, yeah, I got some... You know, tool catalogs. Uh, I got some manuals down here, just kind of information that I've gotten over the years. Extra box of gloves, steering wheel puller, just some hose here for, you know, whatever I need hose for, fuel system work or whatever. What do I got underneath here? Uh, power end gearbox lift, so, yeah. I may ha I made those up, probably contraband. Don't have an engineer stamp on those, but they do the job, and uh, yeah, kind of need it. So, um, pushing drivers down here, as well as here, don't get used a whole ton. There's my uh, spare parts bag. Yeah, sometimes you get extra parts that are still good or whatever or sometimes more than one comes in a set and you only need the one or something like that, then I put them in this bag. I kind of limited myself to this bag. In my old toolbox, it was getting all kinds of junk in there. And uh, I was like, once I moved into this one, I was like, that's it. You know, if I'm not saving parts anymore for the company, if uh, they don't have it, not my problem. So go and order it. So I keep that bag and that's it. Um, height adjustment tool for cat engines is in there. Uh, sorry, height adjustment for uh, fuel injectors for the C15. Uh, what else we got? Just some electrical tape, piece of pipe, uh, my brake leader. Actually very handy, especially if you're doing fuel system work. You can kind of put that on the return line of the fuel system and 
suck the fuel back through. Makes it easier to start the engine afterwards. Save yourself a headache, so, you know, that tip was free, I guess. Grease gun. Um, I wish I would have had this years ago. Man, it's great. So the little 2.0 batteries, I can get about, I don't know, eight or nine tubes of grease through them on the one battery of the heavy uh, extreme pressure two or NGL, whatever it is, NGL I two grease. Um, yeah, there's my angle grinder. And I actually use that quite a bit. Okay, little propane torch, bug spray, bug dope, uh, AMS oil MP spray, HD, and duct tape, scratch remover, mothers, uh, some ether, copper coat, thread sealant, fluid plate, the anaerobic sealant, dielectric grease, turkey basters down there. Uh, a little mini grease gun for power tools, hair tools, a little can of butane, some Loctite, we got uh, red and blue, air tool oil, actually that's uh, AMS oil as well, <laughs> I kind of like that stuff, so. That's probably about it for this drawer, I guess. Yeah, and like, you know, if you got any questions about some of these tools and what I use them for, drop me a comment and I'll get back to you. Oh, got a little puller here, three-job puller. So, just my personal drawer here. Keep some pans and my keys, flashlight, paint pen, timesheet, calculator, boot, laces, and stuff like that. Got all my tickets in this book for uh, going on location and all the safety stuff and who knows what. Um, this guy, my electronics drawer, test leads, you know, if you got to work on trailer lights, very handy. Um, yeah, just some jumper wires and stuff like that. Uh, I've got my little thermal imager down there, kind of handy. Uh, takes the guesswork out of it sometimes when you can see what's going on with the heat. Uh, some alligator or sorry, back probes in there, haywire, or mechanics wire, whatever you want to call it, power probe is in there, very handy tool, kind of like a test light if you're not familiar, but uh, you can put power to things, so you can test, I guess, isolate between the actuator and the wiring, or vice versa, um, so you can make a ground as well, and you can test the ground side. Uh, highly recommend for sure makes life easier takes the guesswork out of it if you're still just using a test light or whatever definitely recommend one of them um, yeah crimping pliers little butane torch here little obd2 scan tool i don't know sometimes our pickups come in with the check engine light so just quickly put a scan on it see how serious it is or whatever it's not like I work on a lot of automotive, but it, it wasn't that expensive, and it's come in handy, even for guys with their personal vehicles, you know, some of the drivers at work, whatever, they come back from being on shift and want to go home, and then they fire up their vehicle, and, oh, what's this, check engine light, so I got it there in case somebody needs it. Uh, wire strippers, so it's kind of one size fits all, they're... They work pretty slick, actually. Pretty happy with those. Trailer uh, light, or trailer plug tester. Let's see, um, make sure you're getting power through your plug. What else? I've got this amp clamp here. From Snap-on, it plugs into a multimeter. Um, stethoscope there trying to pinpoint uh, vibrations or sounds so don't use it a whole lot but once again it's there and I just got a multimeter here uh, this is just a temp gun digital temp gun so kind of don't use it now that I got the infrared one but 
Don't know where else to put it, so it's there. Sometimes you need to put a load on a circuit because circuits behave differently with a load on them, so I've got an incandescent bulb, you know, kind of coming, becoming a little bit rare now, but um, what's this? Just some disconnect tools for, I want to say, uh, weather pack connectors and stuff like that, maybe some metro pack. Um, these are, you know, terminal disconnect tools as well, and I would not recommend buying these. I just, I don't like how you're kind of shoving them into whatever connector, but you got the other end kind of jamming into your hand. So I'd get dedicated ones with the proper screwdriver handle. I will eventually, but, you know, I got something that works, so it's kind of hard to justify, but one day. And down here, last drawer. So I've got my earmuffs here, a toque, uh, yeah, welding gloves. Definitely recommend getting this light, very bright. Um, you kind of stick it everywhere if you're working on up on uh, equipment or whatever, and then it's got the clamp. So this is magnetic here, and then, or if it's so, uh, a piece of aluminum or something that's where you want to mount to, then you can get take this clamp and pulls out. There's spring loaded, so it'll hold it. I guess it's kind of more geared for carpenters, but it'll fit around a two by four, so anything that kind of size. Uh, what else? Yeah, I got my chargers here. So basically, I just took a power bar and these little sticky two-sided tape tabs here, put them on there and zip tied the power bar up. And then I ran the cord out uh, along the side of the, or the bottom of the toolbox. Can't remember how I did it now, but there's a hole in the bottom of the Epic toolbox. And I ran it out the bottom and then I just run an extension cord. So, there, that seems to work just fine for me. Um, vacuum filler here for filling coolant systems, so especially heavy duty trucks, you want to get one of those. Get rid of any air leaks. Even the other day, we had a Wabasto engine heater, wasn't working properly, and another guy was working on the truck, he was trying to figure out what was wrong with this Wabasto, and couldn't figure it out. Ended up replacing the Wabasto, still had the same problem. Um, it seemed to me that there wasn't any coolant flowing through it, so I pinched off the lines, or I drained the coolant, took the lines off, blew through them, they seemed fine. Vacuumed the system, put the coolant back in, and all of a sudden, voila, it started working, so obviously had an airlock. Um, what's this? Ball joint uh, press. All in your U joint press kit. So, use that every once in a while, smaller drive lines. Haven't really tried with ball joints yet. Don't really work on that kind of style, anyways. Oh, and this is kind of a handy puller set, but I think I wrecked it. Yeah, I stripped out the threads you can see so it doesn't pull too strong anymore but handy kit for sure uh, probably need to get that replaced or do something with it anyways what else engraver a little trouble light here And my chargers, yeah. So snap on in Milwaukee. Just on the side of the toolbox. Got my gloves, my creeper, face shield, aerosol cans down there. And that's about it. Um, yeah, magnetic trays here. So some snoop. So it's basically soapy water that just bubbles like crazy. A little can for oil, my hard hat, so it got all dirty from my last service call, guy 
got stuck in the mud pretty good, so he got out of the truck to come go take a look around and see um, what he could do. So he figured he could get out, so he chained up and got back in the truck, started hauling on her, and ting, drive line snapped. Forgot to release the brakes. Oops. So I had to crawl under the truck in all the mud, and and of course it was on location, so they were hardcore about making sure you wear your hard hat. And crawl in the mud, get the drive line out and stuff, so the tow truck could come and get it. That's the story behind behind that, and I haven't really cleaned it off since. So hope you enjoyed that video. Uh, leave any comments below, and uh, we'll get back to you. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe, and we'll talk to you in the next one.